Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. You can push as much campaign messaging as you would like. You could push whatever propaganda you want, spend tens of millions of dollars buying ad space all over the internet and TV, attempting to convince the average American citizen that Bidenomics is working, that the economy's in great shape and we're seeing a full recovery, things are better than ever, and it won't work. You know why? Because we're not stupid. The Biden administration's current strategy seems to be don't believe your lying eyes but you know it i know it everybody knows it not only are things currently bad but they're even worse than advertised and it seems as though all that was necessary to destroy the biden administration's ridiculous narrative was a young man with an iphone walking through costco instantly obliterating the democrats pathetic disgraceful desperate attempt at saving face let's have a conversation about i don't know reality instead of living in joe biden's alternate reality we got some stuff to get into so let's roll the tape all right folks this young man is currently all over twitter instagram every social media platform that you could imagine because of this clip right over here this man reveals the true food inflation by comparing prices with the price tags on photos he took a year ago so i'm walking around costco here and i'm noticing these prices for example these madras lentils 15.99 I bought those a year ago for six ninety nine. I keep getting told that we got, you know, six, seven percent inflation. You gotta be kidding me. Let's look at what else we got going on here. We literally bought this chicken broth five sixty nine two months ago. Dang, this is the flour we were buying for five ninety nine last year. The government has its own math that they manipulate in a dodgy way. Is this a scientific experiment? No, of course not, but it surely does put things really into perspective. Those are price differences over a 12-month period. It's absolutely shocking to see the before and after. Some products experiencing a price increase of 100% in 12 months. And we're not talking about luxury goods or assets. You know, speculative investments, an increase in value due to limited supply and increased demand. We're talking about everyday necessities. And that right there is the conversation that we need to be having because Joe Biden is trying to take credit as if he's lowered inflation. He's done such a great job. Yet over the last 12 months of his administration, life has become unaffordable for your average working class and middle class individuals and families. The argument is that things aren't actually that bad. Things are doing great. The problem isn't Joe Biden's performance. No, it's just your perception. Your perception is skewed, Joe Biden has said multiple times. It's not a direct quote. It's an indirect quote. I'm paraphrasing him, but that's essentially been the Democrat messaging. We've covered it over the last, really, year and a half. That actually the economy is doing great and that things are great for your average person. The problem is that after the pandemic, people just have an inability to be happy or think positive. The notion is absurd. And everybody knows it. We don't need fancy economic data and whatever manipulated data the Biden administration is pushing. We don't need that because every single week we go to the damn grocery store. Every single week we go to the gas pump and fill up our cars. We don't need to analyze the data because we feel it every single day. We feel it at the end of the month when we look at our credit card statements and we wonder, how did I spend so much money? Even as I'm attempting to cut back in every aspect of spending in my everyday life. And to be faced with these constant insults from these elitist, out-of-touch Democrats is beyond insulting at this point. We can see right through their dishonest tactics. And speaking of dishonest tactics and presentations, get a load of this. New York Times' Paul Krugman says inflation is over if you exclude food, gas, and rent. This New York Times clown actually tweeted this. CPI, excluding food, energy, shelter, and used cars. And he writes, the war on inflation is over. We won at very little cost. At very little cost? What an absolute crackhead. Pretty sure the cost has been tremendous. Paul Krugman, by the way, is a premier leftist economist. I mean, he's the guy when it comes to economics within left-wing circles. Circles, he is nothing but a propagandist. Inflation literally only matters within the context of food, energy, and shelter. And of course, we can add transportation, used cars. These are everyday life necessities. Those are literally the things that the majority of Americans spend their money on. If you're living a lower to middle class life, and especially if you have children, you don't exactly have too much disposable income. The majority of what you spend your money on is food, energy, shelter, and cars. Yet these leftoids are celebrating victory in the war against inflation 
inflation by promoting a CPI number that excludes everything that's part of your monthly expenses. Not to mention it still seems as if we're not out of the woods yet, especially considering we just added another war to the mix. Recession fears have not cooled. Here's one headline from Fox Business. New data reveals a crash not seen since the Great Depression could hit in 2024. Here's another piece from Bloomberg. Quote, we expect recession in the U.S. in quarter one of 2024. Chief strategist of U.S. investment strategy at BCA. And here's another report that was just released by Yahoo Finance. The day our market analysis, a potential economic downturn has been a topic of discussion among economists, analysts, and investors since the pandemic recovery began. But continued growth and resilient consumers have kept fears at bay. Now, now, with a war raging between Israel and Hamas, Yardeni Research is saying that there is an increase in the risk of a recession by the end of next year. A note out from Ed Yardeni saying, quote, the prospects of a prolonged war in the Middle East heighten the chance of a recession in the U.S. That's not our base case outlook, but we are raising the odds that we see of a recession before year end of 2024 to 30 percent. That's up from 25 percent. Based on the last two lines there that I read, what this means for potential sanctions on Iran, what that could then do to oil prices as a result. If we could see a move significantly over 100 bucks a barrel, obviously that would put pressure not only here on the U.S., but globally speaking. That's all points to the potential here, the risk of a global recession. But You know, that is the reality that we're facing. That is the reality that every single hard-working American is facing. People have obvious financial concerns right now. Meanwhile, this is how Janet Yellen is speaking during her press interview. Can, can America, can the West afford another war at this time? I, I think the answer is absolutely. Um, America can certainly afford to stand with Israel and to support Israel's military needs. And we also can and must support Ukraine in its struggle against Russia. And look, the American economy is doing extremely well. Great priorities, right? Ah, don't worry. The economy's doing so great, we could definitely afford another war. Meanwhile, you're suffering. Contrast is key, folks. And that's why we're going to end this video with a little clip here, so we could continue to cement it and really put it into perspective. Guess what? Bidenomics is working. Bidenomics is working. Bidenomics is uh, clearly working. Noah of the New Republic pointed out this week, Bidenomics tends to benefit Americans. Everything is just overall more expensive. Groceries, gas, just the cost of living in general. 61% of people across the U.S. live paycheck to paycheck. Are you nervous about the future? Yes, of course. I'm not making ends meet. I'm not making it. I'm setting my savings. Um, my, I get paid tomorrow and already my whole paycheck is spoken for. Would you be able to afford to yeah. stay? Oh, oh no, not at all. I probably would have to move in with my kids or whatever. But no, not by myself, no. It's not just low income or middle class families. High income families are living paycheck to paycheck too. Tell numbers show inflation is rippling into every corner of American life. Some people skipping meals because they simply can't afford it. Reality versus propaganda. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you on the next one.